So we have been discussing this halfway uh, breaking bar last day, right? And you have uh, observed the response of uh, a halfway rectifier because of a sinusoidal input, right? Now the thing is that uh, although we have discussed two types of rectifier, one is this one uh, where the diode is connecting that fashion. That has rectify a portion of the your input signal, positive half cycle, which has been there in the output side. However, uh, if you just uh, connect this uh, diode in that particular fashion, then in, in your output you have only a negative half cycle present. Typically, when you call it a rectifier, you know that uh, rectification means what? Something is not good, you would like to modify, right? And notionally, when something is negative, that is not good for us, right? So, although you see here, okay, this particular circuit, I mean, this entire thing can also act like a rectifier, upper rectifier, but typically, when we refer to a rectifier circuit, diode based rectifier circuit, typically we refer to this circuit. Why? Because you will see that uh, in, in your, uh, if I just consider the input side, you have both the half cycle, positive half cycle and the negative half cycle, both of them are present, but in the output side, you have only the positive thing. Not the negative one. That means you have just uh, you have got rid of this negative thing, right? So that's why it is kind of a rectifier. You can ask why it is called rectifier. Rectification. That means you are just uh, getting rid of uh, the negative thing, the negative half set, right? Although uh, technically you can also say it is also acting as a rectifier to some extent. And last we have seen the the DC voltage. We have already calculated the DC value. The DC value was obtained like uh, the VDC. It was obtained like uh, if the peak is at Vm then it was like Vm by phi, right? Yes, that was the expression for your uh, DC voltage average voltage. That means what? So if you have this kind of thing, this output, then you have this value and this value is equal to your Vdc. Okay. Now, as I already told you uh, that, uh, okay, uh, you have uh, an input signal, something like that. So your input is something like that, a sinusoidal signal riding on um, a DC level. Suppose this is the axis, something like that, although I should that part. This is T and this is Tm, Vm. Peak, this is a minus here. Okay. And what was your uh, DC value? The DC value was this much. VDC. Right. Yes. Now you have some ripples. Last we have talked about ripples. That means uh, I can always visualize this output signal. Output looks something like that. Let me just uh, draw the output. How does it look like? So output uh, will look something like that. This is your output signal. Peak is at PM. This is your output signal. Now this output can be visualized as a summation of uh, the DC level, the constant level, plus some fluctuations, time varying signal, some DC plus TV. And that time varying part, we call it like a ripple. Right. Now, now if I just uh, draw the ripple value, how does it look like? What do you feel? If this is my input signal, Vm sine of omega t, then how does it look like, the ripple part? Ripple plus dc is your output. Ripple plus dc is equal to output. So, your ripple part is nothing but the output minus dc. Right? So, how does it look like then? Sinusoidal part. Sinusoidal part. Yes. So you have this is your output. This is your output. Vm sin omega t from 0 to pi only. And from pi to pi that is 0. From 0 to pi it is Vm sin omega t. And from pi to pi that is 0. It's a DC level given by Vm by pi. Okay. So that means if this output, if you subtract 
the DC level, that is Vm by pi, from this output, you will be getting what is known as your ripple. Then how does it look like? So if this is my This is the ripple part, right? I call it say V ripple. Okay, and this value is at this is minus V DC. Is it okay? This is minus V DC. But whenever it is called like so, rectification means sometimes in your textbook you will study the rectification means AC to DC conversion. It's not like that. It's not DC. The output that you are getting, this one, this black one, it's not DC. Mm. DC means what? That means it should be constant over, over time. But it is not constant. You have the DC part, okay, some DC part is there, that is Vm by pi. And apart from that, you have some time varying signal, that is the ripple part. And this ripple is a measure of how good your rectification is. Right. So, for a good, suppose we have a choice of rectification or choice of rectifier circuits. Then for a good rectifier, this ripple part should be small. Okay. Now, how can we measure the ripple component, ripple content? Because you understand that the positive part, even if the ripple is positive or the ripple is negative, that is not good for your rectification. The magnitude of that particular ripple thing is something that must Others. Okay. So therefore, you would like to find out the RMS value of the ripple. Now, what is that ripple actually? So this ripple can be represented mathematically. This ripple is nothing but I can write down the ripple part as V ripple as V out minus V DC. Right? So ripple, V ripple is called V out minus V DC. Now, how to find out the, the RMS part, root mean square part of this ripple component? How will you find it out? So, ripple RMS. Square is how much? How can write down the expression for this beautiful RMS square? That is a mean square. RMS square means mean square. How to find it out? What is the formula? That you know because last year we have already calculated the uh, this RMS value for the output signal. Overall output. And you have got the value to be Vm by 2. Right, Vm by 2. That was the RMS value of this output. Now today we are interested in finding out, finding out the RMS value of the ripple component. Okay. So what should be the formula? Integration of one by two pi. Okay, one by two pi. First of all, is a mean square, right? So what is the component? The component is V out minus V DC. So it will be better if I do not use this. 1 by 2 by first. So start with V out minus VTC. That is your signal that you would like to find out in terms of your ripple. Or rather the RMS part. So mean square. So square of this. Square of this. Square then mean. It's a continuous wave form. So you have to find out the the corresponding average. How to find out the average? The method is integration. It is a continuous, not a discrete one. <coughs> At this point, discrete, then you have to use summation. Right. So then it will be d of omega t because I am integrating with respect to omega, omega t, 0 to 2 pi, 1 by 2 pi. That is a mean square value. Here it is V ripple RMS square. So mean square, right? So what is that? 
so this v ripple rm square or in short i can write vr rm square that is vr rm square vr rm square is equal to 1 by 2 pi then this integration of what 0 to 2 pi v out minus v dc square and 0 to pi so what i can do is integration 0 to 2 pi you have v out minus v dc square so what you can write is v out square d omega t plus 0 to 2 pi v dc square d omega t minus 2 integration 0 to 2 pi v out v dc d of omega t okay a minus b whole square now what is the first term 0 to 2 pi v out square d omega t 1 by 2 pi outside what is that called v r m is square so the first term is so if i find out v r r m s that means the r m s part of the ripple component square the first part is nothing but your v r m s square right v r m s square that you have already calculated last day plus second one second one this is what will be the second term second term this is the second term in this expression this one if I integrate this, what will you get? Why is zero? Is that difficult? That difficult? It is constant. Yeah, in terms of V is okay. V is a constant, it's not a function of T. Take it outside. 0 to 2 pi t omega t will give you 2 pi, 2 pi by 2 pi 1. So simple VDC square. Right? Third term? 2 VDC square. Third term? VDC is constant. Take it outside. 0 to 2 pi V out d omega t. This is nothing but your VDC. 2 outside. You add another 2 VDC, 2 VDC outside. So minus 2 VDC square. Right? So ultimately, this gives rise to V RMA square minus V D C square. That is the final expression for the ripple component. I mean the RMA value of the RMA square value of the ripple component. Mean square value. Any doubt up to this? In fact, whenever I have written that, that particular expression, right? So there I have not used whether it's a half a brick or any other equal. Sir, last part that I told you. Sir, last part. Zero to two pi. V out VDC D omega T. Out of it, this VDC is constant. You can take it out. It's not a function of T. You can take it outside. Then one by two pi or two is outside. VDC is two or twice VDC is outside. Right? Constant. Then 1 by 2 pi integration 0 to 2 pi v out t omega t. What is that? The expression for the VDC. So minus 2 VDC outside multiplied with VDC. So minus 2 VDC square. So while writing this expression, I have not used whether it's, it is true for a full wave rectifier, a half wave rectifier, any kind of rectifier. Because I have never used this VDC to be Vm by pi or something other than that. It can be anything. It's generally expression, right? So V R R M is square, that means uh, Square of the RMS value of the ripple component is nothing but the RMS value of the output square minus the VDC square. Right? 
So from that you can easily calculate what is what. Uh, last day I have told you what is the value of this uh, ripple factor. This ripple factor is nothing but the ratio of this VR RMS to VDC, right? So that ripple factor RF is nothing but VR RMS divided by VDC. Can I remember the expression for the form factor? The expression for the form factor was the VRMS by VDC. So this one not the same. One is the RMS value of the entire thing. And second one is the RMS value of only the of, of the ripple value, ripple content only. Okay, but this one you left it. So uh, you know that this VR RMS is what? VR RMS is nothing but square root of VRMS square minus VDC square and in the denominator we have VDC. So what is that? Square root of VRMS square by VDC square. That is the that is form factor, right? Form factor. VRMS square by VDC, that is the form factor. Last we have found out that expression form factor square minus 1. That is the expression for, uh, that is the relation between the form factor and the ripple factor. Right. So, for a good rectifier, you should expect that the corresponding ripple factor, or you can also say the form factor, that should be small. That should be small. And hopefully, you have calculated the expression for the form factor last day. Pi by 1.57. Right. That was for half a rectifier. So, one thing is very sure that if your ripple compound is that much, it's not a good rectification, and moreover, what is happening? You have just got rid of the negative part. Now, can you have some mechanism by virtue of which you can also change the polarity of the negative part? Rectification. Rectification is one thing, right? So, what do you mean by rectification? Notionally, philosophically, what do you feel by what do what do you mean by the term rectification? Correction. So what we have got here, you have something negative, you have just washed it out completely. A death sentence. Right. Capital punishment. That's not great sometimes. So what we want is that, okay, something negative, by virtue of something, you would like to make it positive. Right. Something negative, you would like to make it positive. So, full rectifier, right? So, how can I achieve this? So, for that, sir, the ripple uh, RMS value of ripple factor should be as low as possible. As low as possible. Ideally, it should be zero. If you have a constant DC, it should be zero. And we will see how can you achieve this uh, zero ripple to some extent gradually. But one thing is very sure that half a rectifier will not serve this purpose. You have got the, both the cycles, half cycle, positive half cycles, negative half cycles. By virtue of this half a rectifier cycle using only one diode, you have seen that, okay, the positive part is present. If it is an ideal diode, it is completely present. But the negative part is absent. Now, suppose you would like to make this negative as a positive in the output. How is it possible? Then for this, we have to use two diodes, two diodes. So now, take a look at this particular circuit. Now here what we have, yeah. So here what you have, you have this positive half cycle, this negative half cycle, then another positive half cycle. This is fed to the input of your center transformer. This potential is at ground. This potential is positive with respect to this, and this potential is negative with respect to this whenever the positive half cycle is present. And you have these two diodes connected in this fashion, and the resistance between this point and the ground, or rather this point and this point. Now, what happens during the positive half cycle? In the positive half cycle, at this particular point, 
you have more positive voltage with respect to this. So out of these two tires, D1 and D2, only D1 will conduct. And if it's an ideal lab, then the current will flow through this and there is no drop across the diode. Ideal lab means there is no drop across the diode. Zero on resistance, infinite off resistance, and zero PD on. Zero button input, right? And can you please repeat? Which one? So that uh, how, do, how does the weight transfer from. Is it okay? Is it okay? Okay. So what happens in the positive half cycle? This is much more positive. With respect to this initially, there is no current. Right. So if there is no current, that means this potential is, is held at the ground potential. There is no current, that means this resistance is connect. I mean, it is acting like a short circuit. There is no current, that means this point and this point, they are having the same potential. Now when this is positive, just greater than zero, this potential, this point. So dial will conduct. Cathode is held at zero, and anode is held at something greater than zero. Dial will conduct, and the current will flow in this path through ground. Okay. Dial is ideal, so there is no drop across the diode. So what about the voltage over here? So the same voltage will be reflected over there. That happens during the positive half cycle. Okay. That D1 is on, D2 is off. Now, since now you have a second that over present over here in this particular circuit, so during the negative half cycle, what happens? This so during the positive half cycle, this terminal is much more positive with respect to ground, and this terminal is negative with respect to ground. Now, what have, what what is the status of these that during the negative uh, during the positive half cycle? This is held at zero. This is held at negative. So anode is at more negative than cathode. So this diode will not conduct D2, will not conduct during the positive half cycle. Clear? Now during the negative half cycle, what happens? The situation just reversed. Now this, this point is at a higher potential. During the negative half cycle, this point is at higher potential with respect to Yeah. During the negative half cycle, this point is at higher potential with respect to this potential. This is held at the ground once again. Center tap transformer. That means center potential should be at the ground potential. Now, D2 will conduct now. Because the anode potential is higher than the cathode potential. Right? D2 will conduct, D1 will be off. Okay. Current will flow through this path and the current will flow from this point to this point. So the direction of the current is the same, whether your input is positive or the input is negative. So once again, through RL, the current will always flow from this terminal to ground terminal, like this. Okay, so irrespective of your polarity of the input signal, whether it is a positive or negative, the output current will always flow from this point to the ground terminal. Okay, so therefore your output is unidirectional. Output voltage is unidirectional. Output current is unidirectional, and the output voltage is always greater than zero because current never flow from this point to ground. This point to this point, from ground to this point, current always flow from here. Also, if you just uh, if you just check over there, the current flows from this point to ground. Here also, the current flows from this point to ground, whether the input is positive or the input is negative. So the so potential at this point is always higher than the ground potential. And if if I assume that both of these two diodes they are ideal in nature, then uh, this output waveform that you have got, so there is no drop at this peak and that peak over there, this should be same. Suppose some input signal is applied over there. Say, say let me consider. Okay, suppose this is say 10 volt. For example, and suppose this is a one is to one transformer. So what we expect over here? So you have this kind of thing. This is five. This is five. 
you understand na huh? 10 volt plus 10 minus 10 so 1 is to 1 so between this terminal between this terminal and this terminal the voltage difference maximum is 10 volt that means plus 5 minus 5 okay then can you tell me give me the expression for peak inverse voltage with respect to the output voltage what will be the expression for the peak inverse voltage with respect to the output voltage so i can call say make it more generic what i can say is your output over there is represented by this is suppose this peak is at say vm okay mod of vm sin minus vm yeah mod of vm you can call it mod of vm sin but that is the expression for v out that is the expression for v out good now what should be the peak inverse voltage now while calculating the peak inverse voltage the idea is that there is a maximum reverse voltage at the diode in which stand and hopefully you can understand that uh, the peak inverse voltage for each of these two diodes will be the same because they behave similarly they behave similarly right now while calculating the peak inverse voltage for diode d1 you have to consider the negative half cycle and while or while calculating the peak inverse voltage for the diode d2 you have to consider the positive half cycle so we consider both ideally initial let's assume idea and say it is 1 is to 1 Let it be. Forget about this one is to one. We just consider the output is something like that. Output is VM. I mean, the peak of the output is at VM. So, with respect to this output, you tell me what should be my peak inverse voltage. So, minus VM. Yeah. Any other answer? The peak inverse voltage. Hmm. When can we expect the peak inverse voltage to occur? That means the maximum reverse voltage that the diode can withstand. <laughs> positive peak then you expect that uh, this diode will experience a peak negative voltage isn't it when this is at positive peak this diode will conduct so you have the maximum positive value present over there right and the maximum negative value present over there is it okay So while calculating the peak inverse voltage for the positive half cycle, you have to consider this point over time. Okay, so at that point of time, the cathode potential of the diode D two is V, and the anode potential of the diode is what? Minus V. Isn't it? So if it is a plus V. This is at minus here, and that is the maximum negative voltage that the diode withstands for this particular circuit. So, what is the value? Two. So, peak inverse voltage for this Coulomb rectifier is given by two here. Last time we have seen that the Coulomb or half wave rectifier case, it was only Vm, right? Or in other words, what I can say, the peak inverse voltage P I V is given by twice of V M, where V M is the peak of the output. Okay, that is the case for a full wave rectifier. For the half wave rectifier case, you have seen that that peak inverse voltage was given by V M. Now, which one is beneficial? A high, I mean, a PM, a PIV of PM or a PIV of two PM? Yeah, hmm? yeah. two PM. Yeah. Yeah. Greater negative. What's your answer? Two PM. Why PM? Because the diode will not have to go through a higher voltage and get changed. Why two PM? Somebody said two. Break down. 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 Break
your data sheet says that the PIB of any diode, suppose this is, say let it be 20 volt. What does it mean? That means if you apply any voltage, a negative voltage greater than 20 volt across the two terminals of the diode, then the diode will break down. It will be damaged. Right? So that information you are getting from the manufactured data. Right? So now if you employ this diode in the in the half-wave rectifier circuit, then what will be the corresponding peak voltage? The, the, the PF peak of that means 20 volt? 20. Right? But you have certain problems associated with half-wave rectifier. You know that. We have already mentioned. Now, if you employ the same set of diodes in the full wave rectifier case, then what should be the maximum output voltage then? 10 on Because 2 Vm is 20. So Vm is 10. So if you employ the same diode in the half-wave rectifier circuit, it can rectify up to 20 volt. Okay, but if you employ the same diode in the full-wave rectifier circuit, to make the diode alive, the maximum voltage that the diode, I mean the maximum output voltage that you can have at the output terminal is only 10 volt. So in order to achieve the advantages of full wave rectifier, you are compromising the maximum output voltage that you can get at the output cell. What's my point? So you have to find out some solution so that you can have a full wave rectification. At the same time, the PIV should not be 2 VM. It should be VM for an ideal lab, for example. Okay. So what is the solution? The solution is you have to use more diodes in a different circuit, different uh, rectifier circuit, full wave rectifier circuit. Yeah. And this is called a bridge full wave rectifier, which looks something like that. Bridge full wave rectifier. Okay. Try to understand how does this particular circuit operate. Now here you have four diodes. So, so VM is more acceptable than 2 VM. Yeah, as far as the PIV is concerned. Okay, for ideal it should be VM or 2 VM. Practically you see that there is some drop across the diode and it should be somewhat less than that. Anyway, so this is called bridge full rectifier. Now it involves four diodes. D1, D2, D3. D4. Now what is the working principle of this particular circuit? Now during the positive half cycle, obviously this point is kept at the higher potential as compared to this point. Now out of this, so initially this, this is at the ground potential. So this is at a higher potential during the positive half cycle. Now out of these two are D1 and D3. Which one will be conducting? D1. Why D1? Because the cathode is at zero, anode is at a higher potential. So the current will flow through D1. All the RL is connected from here to here. For your understanding, you can visualize that, the, that this uh, resistance RL is connected from here to here because this is also at the ground potential. Okay, so the current will flow through D1, then through RL. Let's assume RL is there because this is at the this potential and this is at the ground potential. So we can visualize that whether RL is connected between these two points. So can will flow through this, through this, and then through D2. Why D2? Because the cathode is at the negative potential. So the current will flow through D1, through RL, through D2, like this. This is the path. Come to the ground and this is the path. Okay. So the direction of the current from this terminal to ground terminal. Now if I assume that okay, the diodes are ideal, so there is no drop across the diode. 
Okay, so RL is connected from this. Uh, let me let me call. Let me call this is a point A. No, let me call this point to point A. Suppose this is point A. This is point B. This is point C. Okay. So during the positive half cycle. Oh, let me call another point. It is B. D. So during the positive half cycle, potential at point A is greater than the potential of point D, <laughs> right? So here the potential is more as compared to the potential over there. So what happens? And the potential at B is at ground. Initially there is no current, so there is no current. That means this is acting as a short circuit. So Potential at point B is at zero. Potential at point A is greater than zero. Right. Potential at point C is also at zero. Now, out of these two diode, D three and D one, which one will conduct? Obviously, D one, because for one only, V A K is greater than zero. Right. This is greater than zero. This is zero. This is greater than zero. This is zero, but it is cathode. This one is anode. Okay, so D one will conduct during the positive half cycle, and the current will flow through B to ground. That means from B to C because C is at ground potential. And then from C to D, and the current will flow in that. You have to complete the loop now. Starts from here, point A, D1. You have R L over there, D2, and then this is the path. Either you show in that way, or it will be better if you show in that way. This is the flow of the current. Here, yeah? then what happens in the negative half cycle? D. In the negative half cycle, obviously D1 and D2 they will not be on. Rather, D3 and D4 they will operate. Sir, rather than joining in the ground, why did why don't we just join like the those two points? Like Which two points? Huh? From uh, the point middle uh, point in middle of D3 and D2 and D1 and D4. Why don't we just connect it? Where D3 and yeah? We want this one. Yes, yes. Ah, you can do that. No problem. Same thing. Same thing. Okay. Then what happens in the negative half cycle? Negative half cycle, obviously, the completely the opposite thing. D4 and D3. D4 and D3. During the negative half cycle, this is at the higher potential with respect to this. So if I once again use the same nomenclature, A, B, C, D, then during the negative half cycle, potential at point D is more than the potential at point A. Potential at point C is one second at ground. Now, then out of these two D4 and D3, uh, D4 and D2, which diode will conduct during the negative half cycle? D4. D4, because anode is at higher, cathode is at ground. Here anode is at ground. So D4 will be on. Current will flow through this. One second, you visualize that okay, RL is connected between B to C. So this, then this, this path, and then through D3. And this is the flow of the current, like this. Notice that the flow, the direction of the current flow is once again the same from the point B to point C or point B to ground, not from ground, ground to point B. So unidirectional current flow. So the output voltage is once again unidirectional. 
the polarity is always greater than zero, it's not less than zero. Although the input polarity is negative. Okay, so you can have this uh, Vm's mod of Vm sin omega t from 0 to 2 pi. Right? Then what you can do? Is it okay? Any doubt after this? Rishi Roy. Any doubt? ओके <laughs> 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 Let me check whether you can get the peak inverse voltage to be Vm or not. We are aiming for Vm. That's why you have employed so many diodes. Because using two diodes, you can have this rectification, full of rectification. You have already seen. So why should we use four diodes? You can argue that only for the next class. <laughs> okay, so we are aiming for a VM, uh, PIV to be equal to VM, but let's check whether you are getting VM or not. Okay. Now let's consider the first circuit. When the input is at the positive peak over here, you can expect that the diode D3 or the diode D4, they will experience the reverse bias and whenever the input is at the positive peak over there, that is the maximum reverse bias. What is that potential? So when the input is at positive peak over there, okay, what about the status of the diode D3? What is the reverse voltage that the diode is withstanding at this particular point? For the diode D3, what do you find? At Vm, at Vm, Va D3, that means the anode potential is always held at 0. This is always true. And at Vm, what is the cathode potential? What is the cathode potential? Vm. Vm. Should be Vm. Right? So what is the peak inverse voltage? That is the maximum voltage that the rat can have. Maximum reverse voltage. Anode is at zero. Cathode is at its maximum peak. Maximum positive peak. Right? What is the voltage? Mod? What is the absolute value? Vm. We can also verify the same thing with either D1 or D2 or D4. We are getting the same result. Right? So now, PI, now, by virtue of this circuit, you are able to reduce the PID from 2 Vm to Vm. Now, had this been the case, that means, if you have a 20 volt rating for the diode, now, if you have four such diodes, and if you employ those diodes in a bridge rectifier circuit, something like that, then at the output side, you can rectify a 20 volt peak sinusoidal signal. Last time, using a simple full wave rectifier circuit which involves standard type transformer, using those 20 volt rating diodes, you can only rectify up to 10 volt, 10 plus 10 minus 10. Because the PIV rating was, I mean the PIV value was 2V, 2VM for uh, the previous. Now for this circuit, since the PIV rating was, uh, I mean the PIV is equal to VM, so now you can rectify up to 20. Is it clear? Is it clear what the VM given is? Should be VM. 
This is what? This is what? This potential. Hmm. Or you can also visualize from that point also. This is the output terminal. This is a peak. There is no drop across the diode. So this potential is equal to this potential. Sir, I can say anode minus V plus. Minus V and plus V. So that's why 2 here. Sir, first time, half-way practice by, half-way and 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 half-way the notion of rectification is, is also the correction. That means if you have something negative, you have to make it positive. Or in other words, if you can also visualize the circuit from that particular uh, output from that particular notion. Suppose, yeah. You have this kind of waveform. And for full wave, you have this kind of wave, waveform. Right. Now, out of these two, which one is having more fluctuation? More change? This is with HWR. This is with FWR. Or, out of these two, which one is having the higher average value? Higher average is for full wave, right? But here, if you consider the half wave rectifier case (HWR), then you'll see that positive half cycle you have this current, this voltage, and the negative is completely zero. That means you have more fluctuation. However, here you have both these two half cycles. You have same mode of this uh, sine of omega, yeah. pm sine omega. So you can have less ripple in case of uh, FWR. Right. So, first of all, uh, one thing is very clear from, from your understanding that uh, this half-wave rectifier will have less DC value as compared to the full-wave rectifier. And it's quite obvious that, uh, even if you do not calculate, it's quite obvious that the DC value will be just a double. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. There is no need to calculate. So, VDC for full-wave rectifier is 2 VMYPI. You have seen it. Uh, uh, for a half-wave rectifier, it is VMYPI. It will be 2 VMYPI. Mm -hmm. Right? What will be the RMS value? RMS of the output. VMYPI root 2. Remember, whether it is a, I mean, uh, whether it is a, this input, uh, this, out, this output, or this output, you have the same RMS. Because you are just making the square. Right. And you know already for a sinusoidal signal, your sinusoidal signal, the uh, corresponding RMS value is given by Vm by, if it is at P, uh, Vm, if the peak is at Vm, then the RMS is given by Vm by root 2. That you know. Okay. So, from that you can calculate my uh, uh, form factor for this uh, full wave rectifier. Same expression, RMS value by average value. What is RMS? So for the uh, so the form factor, so the form factor for a full wave rectifier is given by V RMS by V D C. So what is V RMS? V M by root two. What is V D C? 2 Vm by pi. Now see, it's 2 Vm by pi, it's Vm by root 2. It's not pi by 2. Pi by 2 by 2. So what is the value ultimately? We just calculate what is the x by value? Pi by 2 root 2. Last time it is pi by 2 only. This time pi by 2 root 2, that means even less. 1.11. So that is the form factor for full wave rectifier, it was 1.57, 1.57 for half wave rectifier, it is only 1.11 for full wave rectifier, okay. Now once you know form factor, 
it's very easy to calculate this factor. That was the formula. The formula that I have derived today at the very beginning. The same expression you can also invoke over there. So the ripple factor, so the expression for the ripple factor is given by square root of form factor square, form factor square minus 1. What is the value? Zero point four eight. What was the ripple factor for half a rectifier? Did you calculate that then? <laughs> one point five seven square minus one square root of that. 2.57 into 0 0.57. 1 1.21. 1.21, something like that. Okay. So reduce, no? Reduce. Reduce. So now, let me. Okay. So that is the summary. You have already seen. The calculation you have already done, no? VDC, VM by pi, that is 0 0.318 VM. Get double over there called cool air. RMS, VM by 2, that is 0.5 VM. Here it is 0 0.707 VM, VM by root 2. Right? Form factor, it's 1.57. Here you have 1.11. Right? Then the ripple factor. I mean the RMS value of the ripple, 0 0.385 VM. And here you have 0 0.308 VM. If you compare the numerator part, this is less, 0.385 to 0 0.308. So less ripple for cool wave, 0 0.385 VM for half wave for cool wave, 0 0.308 VM. And more average. Half wave is having a VM by pi average, cool wave is having 2 VM by pi average. So numerator is less, denominator is more, that gives rise to even lesser ripple factor. It is only 48% uh, for uh, full wave rectifier, but it is 1.21% 1, 1 1, for half wave rectifier. And the PIB value, it was for perfectly full wave, it is 2 VM. If it is a bridge rectified thing, then it is it should be VM. And here it is VM. Okay, that is the summary. 0 0.308 here. So, you have to over You have calculated that now? Yeah. 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 Okay, so so far, what we have uh, assumed is the idea. So far, we have assumed that the right is idea. That means the cutting point is 0, R on 0, R of infinite. Now, suppose let us try to understand what happens when you invoke the constant voltage model for the diode. So this graph is for, I mean this circuit is for the half wave rectifier involving only one diode and only one resistor. Now I assume that the diode is not ideal one. Rather, what you can visualize, okay, the diode is represented by virtue of a battery, something like that whose value is given by V of T. Okay? Then what should be the output? What do we expect? First of all, try to understand what happens. Suppose it will be better if I observe from this side first. This. Now what happens? As of now, we have assumed that uh, if my input is greater than 0, the diode will be on. If the input is less than 0, the diode will be off. Now, if the diode is represented by means a battery of, uh, say, magnitude VD, constant voltage model, then until and unless your output, I mean, uh, until and unless your input is just greater than the VD value, then the diode will not be on. So, when this voltage is greater than VD, just greater than or equal to VD, then the diode will be on. Right. And what should be the output voltage over there? V out. 
This voltage, what they are? So here you have, so if you apply this uh, KVL, it was voltage law. Do you understand that? Okay, there you have some plus minus Vt, right? Plus minus Vt. So now if you apply KVL, here it is minus plus, plus minus, plus minus. So this voltage is equal to this voltage plus this voltage. So what I can write? V out is equal to Vs minus Vt. V out is equal to Vs minus Vt or Vs is equal to V out plus Vt. So whenever your input is at plus Vm, for example, Vm sin omega t, suppose Vm is equal to say phi. So your input is something like that. Your input is given by phi sin of omega t. So when your Vt value is given by 0 0.3, 0 0.3 volt. So when your input is at, is just greater than 0 0.3, then the diodes will be on. And when the input is at its peak, that means when the input level is at 5 volt, then what will be the output voltage? 4.7. 5 volt minus 0 0.3, 4.7. Okay, so now if this is your input fluctuation with respect to time or half a rectifier thing, this will be your output fluctuation. So you notice two changes. First of all, the conduction angle of the diode changes because it was 180 degree. For the half a rectifier ideal diode, the conduction angle was 180 degree, pi, pi radian. This time, this conduction angle is less than. Depending upon the absolute value of this VM, I mean VM and the on, range, on voltage, VT on, you can have the defined values, but it should be less than 180 degree. Okay? And second thing is this peak. This peak of the output voltage is not equal to the peak of your input, rather, it is peak of the input minus the on voltage, VT on. Okay? And now if you, so this is the variation of this uh, input and output with respect to time. Now if you observe or if you would like to find out the transfer characteristics of the circuit, that means input versus output, transfer characteristics is not drawn with respect to time, rather input versus output. But how does it look like? I have already shown over there V out, uh, mathematically what I can write, V of out T is equal to V of in T minus VD. That is the expression. V of out T is equal to V of in T minus VD from 0 less than T less than T by 2. Okay. And that is also true when V in T is greater than or equal to V D. Otherwise, what is the expression? Otherwise, the expression is V out T is equal to 0 otherwise. <laughs> Okay, so V out versus VD, what kind of nature you can expect? V out versus V in. V out versus V in. What is the formula? The formula is as long as V in T is greater than VD. So now, so V in varies in this particular, along this we have uh, plotted V in or Vs, along this we have plotted V out. So when V in is greater than V D, then this expression is valid and V out is equal to V in minus V D. What is that expression? This stands for the straight line with slope unity. Slope unity. Y is equal to X minus K. Okay. So, slope unity. And if 
phi in is less than vt, less than vt, then obviously your v out is equal to 0. So, over here that will be the expression, that will be the radiation of v out with respect to v. This is called the transfer characteristic, input versus output. Clear? Achha. During, uh, whenever I am considering this uh, constant voltage model for this half wave rectifier, what should be the peak inverse voltage? Vf minus 0 minus minus Vf minus Vd. Vf minus Vd. When can you expect the peak inverse voltage to take place? One huh? When can you expect the peak inverse voltage to take place? When the peak of the negative So for this half wave rectifier circuit, when the input when the input is at its negative peak, then you have the maximum uh, reverse voltage at the anode terminal. Right? Now then, what is your output? Zero. Zero. What is your output? Zero. 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 So what is the peak inverse voltage? Zero. Zero. So for the half a rectifier case, the peak inverse voltage is once again here. Any doubt up to this? Peak inverse voltage is the maximum reverse voltage that's the lacking distance. Right, that means with respect to cathodes, if I consider the cathode is at a fixed potential, so what is the maximum negative anode voltage? Or if I consider the anode is at the fixed potential, then what is the maximum positive cathode voltage? Either cathode is fixed, either cathode is fixed, so maximum negative anode, or anode is fixed, maximum positive cathode. That should be off. While calculating peak inverse voltage, that should be off. And what is the maximum negative voltage that I am expecting across the two terminals of the rail? The maximum negative voltage, not the positive one. So while calculating PI, you understand that this B A K is always less than C. But what is that negative voltage? It's less than the negative voltage, but, but what is the maximum of this negative voltage? That is the right thing. Okay. Which one? Minus VM means? Oh, for FWR. For FWR. Here. No? This is the fluctuation. So when the input is at its positive peak over there, when the input is at its positive peak, this will be negative. So this rod will be off. This rod is off. So what is that voltage? This Vm plus Vm. What is that voltage over there? Minus Vm. What is the difference to Vm? Okay. Okay. So with this, uh, let me conclude today's discussion.